I'm a camp director. That's right, full time year round I get to be a camp director. So I'm going to give you a moment to process that. I understand the confusion. My parents have only recently stopped asking me when I'm going to get a real job. <laughs> but it's the right job for me. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what that is. Chris told you I work for Camp For All. And I have the opportunity to work with those campers that he talked about campers with muscular dystrophy, campers with epilepsy, campers with cancer, with heart disease, sickle cell disease campers with severe burns and more. Now I say I have the opportunity to work with those clients because that's really what it is. It's an opportunity for me. And so when I think about the opportunities that I have, I, I often wonder why more people aren't out there celebrating those opportunities. And so I like to think of different things. And now I know that I like to break frames. I just learned that. <laughs> I like to break frames. So, I put together a thought that I call selfish selflessness. I like to hold two competing thoughts in my head, put them together like that, and explore that a little bit. So I'm going to explore the concept of selfish selflessness with you guys just a little bit today. I'm a, part, I'm a Rotarian. And one of the things, one of the mottos for the Rotary Club is service above self. And I like that idea. And I, my guess is, based on the people who are in this room, we all like the idea, the concept of service above self and what that means. And so I, I spent a little time thinking about that. How do we promote service above self? How do we teach our young people service above self? And so having an English background and working in outdoor recreation, I feel like that qualifies me as a great researcher. <laughs> so I've done some in-depth studies on what this means and, and, and the solution to how do we promote service above self. And I did these in-depth studies with a broad base audience, my friends and family. <laughs> and here's what I've come up with. We don't. We don't promote service above self because the people that I talk to, the people that do the kinds of things I do, they understand that it's not service above self. It's service because of what we get back for it. Now that might shake up a little bit. Hopefully that breaks some frames. Initially when people do service, whether it's service in a career like mine or service volunteering around the community, initially when people do service, I think they do it in service above self. But what they soon realize, and one of the reasons that they continue to do service above self, is because they think about the fact of what they get back. And what happens to those people, and what's happened to me, is that when I do the things that I do, people come up to me and they say, it takes a special person to do what you do. A couple of thoughts come to my mind right away when they say that. First off, it's genuine, it comes from the heart, they're giving me a compliment and I accept it. And I typically say something like, thank you, I get so much more out of it than I give. And they take that to mean, he's very modest. <laughs> my friends know that's not true. But it is the true statement that they don't really get. And there's a couple of things that I realize. One, they don't understand. When they say it takes a special person to do what you do, they don't understand what it is I do. And two, they think it's a sacrifice. So why don't they understand? I had an experience that taught me a little bit about why people don't understand. There's an organization called Bo's Place here in Houston. And Bo's Place works with families, children, adults who are grieving the loss of a loved one. And Bo's Place has come out to Camp For All, and I had the opportunity, I've had the opportunity a number of times, both to see their facility and to see them out at Camp For All. And on a Saturday morning when they were coming for a family camp weekend, I got to see a training video that they did. They talked to our staff a little bit about how to interact with people who are suffering the loss of, uh, of a loved one. And so we watched the video and we got to talk about it. And they have volunteers, people from this community who go in there and volunteer to facilitate those groups and facilitate other people's grief. Really? They go in there and they volunteer to facilitate other people's grief. Now I need to tell you guys something about myself. This is something personal. So I would like you guys to promise to just keep it here. Can we do that? <laughs> Thank you. I'm a former Marine and my Marine buddies might uh, give me a hard time if they heard this. 
I'm an extremely emotional person. I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Oftentimes when I'm watching movies with my children, I have contact problems. <laughs> and sometimes they'll look over from the couch and they'll say, Papa, are you having a contact problem? <laughs> and so when I watched this video and, and, and learned about how to interact with these people who are suffering the loss of a loved one, I watched the video and when I finished watching that video, and I was having some contact problems, I thought to myself, it takes a special person to do what they do. And then I realized I just didn't understand. My guess is that those people who are doing that would say, it doesn't take a special person. They get way more out of it than they give. And so then I realized that it really was an understanding problem. And I understood something different about this, the, the issue of selfish selflessness. So that's the understanding part. What about the sacrifice? People say it takes a sacrifice. This isn't a sacrifice. A sacrifice to me is giving something for others without getting a return on it or without getting the same kind of return on it. And I think that all of us could identify the, the men and women in our armed services. They know what sacrifice is about. That's giving for a cause. And, and I appreciate what they do. But I want to take it down a little bit closer to home for me. And I want you to hear about a hero. I'm a camp director, so I had to have a Walt Disney quote in there. <laughs> but I want to introduce you to a young man named Brandon and hear his story about sacrifice. Well, when I was little, of course, I, mean, I got burned in a car fire. And the first thing I remembered that popped in my head was this big explosion in the front of the car. And uh, two of my little brothers were up in the front. And uh, what I had to do was I had to run up to the front and uh, save them. So what I did is I got one of my little brothers and I threw him out. I didn't throw him out, but I threw him in the back to get him out of the fire. And I couldn't get my littlest brother out of the car, uh, car seat because it was a new car seat and I didn't know how to unhook it. And so, um, uh, what I did is that I got a blanket that we had from one morning and I just put it over him and I held myself there over him until I fainted and the next thing I woke up outside of the car in somebody's arms and that's basically it. That's sacrifice. What I do isn't sacrifice. And serving others isn't the kind of sacrifice that Brandon knows. Now, Brandon would also tell you that he got a return on his investment. But that's what I call sacrifice. So we know it's an understanding problem. And we know that it's not sacrifice, and hopefully we've defined that. So what is it? How do we get people to think about service in terms of the selfishness? How do we get people to think about that? Well, one of the things that happens, and I don't know about you, how many people here have heard people say kids these days? Kids these days, yeah. yeah. Do you respond to people the way that I do? Because I say, yeah, aren't they great? People look at me strange when I say that. It's okay, people look at me strange all the time. I get to work with kids these days, and we talk about all ages of kids. I get to work with college students who give their summers and their weekends to a cause. They do it in service, but I will tell you that each and every one of them the most amazing people I know will tell you that they get more out of it than they put into it. And the other thing that they'll tell you is that doing that kind of service is how they found themselves. Doing that kind of service is where they found out who they are. That's the idea of service that we need to spread. We need to spread that idea around the community. So there's a couple of ways to think about that. We've talked about the lack of understanding, but how do we serve? How do we get out there and do things? And how, most importantly, do we tell other people to do it? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to serve in our areas of strength and interest, our passion. If we go out and do things in our passion, that makes all the difference. We have all kinds of passions out here, things that we love to do. I personally love working with children, and there's a couple of reasons. I'm a very childlike person. I try to keep it in the childlike category. My wife sometimes says childish. It depends on the scenario. But I'm a very childlike person, and so I love working with kids. And when I work with the campers 
that I listed off to you, where other people look at these children and see infirmities and deformities and illnesses. I see children who want to have fun. And I understand the concept of children who I want to have fun because I'm still one of those. So I operate in an area of strength, an area of interest, a passion. You may have been able to tell that I have a little bit of passion about this topic. But this isn't an either or list that you see in front of you here. This is an all of, a, of the above list. A good place to start is strength and passion. But we also, as part of the selfishness, we need to do some things that are new. We need to keep an open mind and we need to try some new things. And I had the opportunity to do that with Bo's Place. I told you the story earlier about the video I watched in the morning. Well, that afternoon at lunch, I got to serve food. And I love, it's one of my favorite places at camp to serve food because all of the campers have to come through there. And Camp for All has good food. Not good camp food, good food. And so it's enjoyable. They come in and I talk to them and I interact with them as they're going through and I ask them questions about what they want on their plate and I don't listen and I put it all anyway. And <laughs> mostly because I'm distracted because I'm having conversations. What was your favorite activity today? Did you like the horseback riding? What did you like most about it? And a gentleman walks up while Bo's place is there and he has a Marine Corps hat on. And of course I do what any former Marine does. I said, oh, were you in the Marine Corps? He said, no, my son was. Oh, what was his MOS? And he tells me about his MOS. I said, where was he stationed? Well, he was in Iraq when he died. Prior to that morning, I would have said, I'm really sorry for your loss. And I would have handed him his tray, and I would have moved on, and he would have moved on. But I learned the lesson that morning. And while I don't feel like I'm the guy to share emotions, I did what I do. I talked to Marine Corps. And I say, so primary MOS, secondary MOS, what else did he do? How did he get in? And so he starts talking to me about his son. And then, of course, we're backing up the food line. And so I tell him that I'll come see him in a little bit when I'm done serving. And I finish serving. I go sit down with him. And he shares challenge coins with me. He pulls out challenge coins, coins that he hasn't been able to share with anybody else there, although he's tried, but people are like, oh, that's really cool. What does that mean? And we did what two Marines do when they get together. We talked. And, and a couple of things happen when two Marines get together. First off, we talk in a language that's our own with lots of acronyms, okay? Um, we, we use letters like MOS, and if you didn't understand what I meant when I said MOS, that's okay, he did. <laughs> <laughs> My wife has heard these as well, and she may or may not know what MOS is now. She usually tunes it out at this point and walks away somewhere else at the party because she sees I found a kindred spirit. And we talk about Marine Corps things, and that's what he and I did. And while he wasn't in the Marine Corps himself, he was living the Marine Corps life, and that's how he was celebrating his son. And so I spent the weekend interacting with this man off and on, talking to him about his son, the things he had done, the people that he had met. And on Sunday when they were getting ready to go, I walked up to him and put my hand out to shake his hand and tell him how much I appreciated meeting him. He opened his arms up and pulled me in and gave me a big hug. And he said, thank you. You've been like my son for this weekend. I can tell you that right now, telling that story to you, I'm feeling very selfish. I, I can't imagine anything more than that. And that was because I stepped out and tried something new. I wouldn't have called that an area of strength of mine, other than talking. I wouldn't have called it an area of strength, but I did it because it was new and I kept an open mind. So here's that plug. <laughs> and it's the plug for you to go do something. So I like what Chris said in the opening. Uh, and, and I attend a lot of conferences. I love attending conferences. I'm excited about the rest of the day because I get to sit out there with you and hear some more wonderful people. And I hope that when we leave here, we do something. We change how we live because of what we've done here today. That's the important thing. Where do we go from here? So Camp For All is the camp that I'm the director at. Camp Janus is the burn camp that I volunteered at and I was a, camp, a cabin counselor for. Helpingahero.org builds houses for servicemen and women who have severe injuries, who have severe injuries, they build them houses, give them a house. If house, housing is your thing, we talked about areas of strength, Habitat for Humanity builds houses as well. 
and then Bo's Place, the stories that I've been talking about at that. Though, these are all organizations that you could go out and get involved in. These are all organizations, because I know who's in this audience, that you can encourage others to go out and get involved with. There's more. VolunteerHouston.org is a place to find all kinds of ways for you to get involved in our community right here. Find a way to get involved. And coming full circle, why? Why do I serve? Why do I want you to serve? Why do I want my children to serve their community? Because it's selfish. Because I want you to get what I've gotten out of this. I want my children to get what I've gotten out of this. It feels good. We get to understand ourselves and we get to be a role model. And I'm a camp director, so I need to have an object lesson. I'm going to put that around being a role model. Ralph Waldo Emerson has a saying, who you are speaks so loudly I can't hear what you're saying. Your actions speak louder than words. And I have what I call the role model principle. I have no idea if I created it or not. If you do a lot of speaking, you know, you realize that you probably heard something somewhere from somebody. But people pay attention more to what you do than to what you say. Would you guys agree with me on that? So I want you to fill in the blanks for me. People pay attention more to what you than to what you say. Actions speak louder than words. But I'm going to prove that. So what I'd like you to do is put your hand really high in the air. I told you I'm a camp director. We've got to do something. <laughs> and I want you to put your other hand out like this. Now, if you have coffee in your hand, then that means you didn't listen when they told you you couldn't bring it in here. <laughs> so please set it down so nobody sees. If you need to, you can do it on your knee as well. But we'll have the hand down like this. And when I say go, I want you to bring your hand down just like that. When I say go, I want you to bring your hand down just like that. So camp director, so it's about safety. So we're going to do a little test here. Without waiting for me to say go, in slow motion, making sure that you don't hit anybody or anything, bring your hand down. Make sure we have a nice, safe path. Does everybody have a nice, safe path? I would see some nods. I'm going to take by laughter that it's safe. So we're going to stretch a little bit and then side to side. This time it's for real. Ready? One, two, three. Go. Because people pay attention more to what you than to what you say. Actions speak louder than words. Can I get everybody to give me a big OK sign high in the air? No bent elbows. Very high, very high. There we go. Go ahead and put it down on your chin. Go ahead and put it on it. Yeah, that'd be this chin. That'd be this chin. Because people pay attention more to what you than to what you say. Actions speak louder than words. So here's what I would like your actions to be. Go out and do something. Where do we go from here is we go out and we serve. We do it for ourselves because we're selfish. And because we're selfish, it's a selflessness. Now, we all have those reasons that we want to serve, and I've talked about a number of them, but I'm going to give you one more as I leave. And this is a recent one for me. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to be a cabin counselor inside a camp. Now, as a camp director, it had been since uh, <clears throat> mid-90s, since uh, <laughs> I had actually been inside a cabin. So there are people who have known me for years are going, I don't know if he can do this. He trains people how to do this, but uh, can he still do it? I think I did, and I had an opportunity to meet an amazing young man and learn about him. This is Sean. And Sean is Brandon's little brother from the car fire. And because of Brandon's sacrifice, I had the selfish ability to watch Sean dance and watch him play at camp and have a great time. And now I can call him my friend. I hope you get the same experience that I did and the same kind of selfishness. Go out and do something. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.